From here starts the speaking test. This is the speaking mock test of the International English Language Testing System taking place online in Bross IELTS Academy. The candidate is Noman. The candidate number is 01313458. The examiner is Louise Meinusch, examiner number 443533. Good afternoon, my name is Louise. Would you please tell me your full name? Yes, my name is Noman Sgarbeg, but uh, my nickname is Nomi, so you can call me just Nomi. Okay, and can I see your identification, please? Yes, here you go. Okay, thank you. Then we can get started with part one now. In the first part of the exam, I will ask you some personal questions. Let's talk about friends. The last time you saw your friends, what did you do together? Well, the last time I saw my friends was actually about a week ago. And uh, we were spending a lot of time uh, together on the weekends. Uh, we had some uh, chit chat with the, each other and then we went for cinema to watch a movie together and uh, it, we had really a good quality time there. Mm -hmm. And what makes a friend into a good friend? Well, a friend, uh, what friend, uh, friend makes him a good is that uh, if he is honest about you and about, honest about himself, even when you are facing some hard times, he can give you some good advice so to overcome your hardships. So I think that a friend should be honest to make it. That's what makes him a good friend. Mm -hmm. And do you think it's important to keep in contact with friends you knew as a child? Yes, I think it is important to, to have in, uh, contact with the friends that we, we made in our childhood because uh, childhood memories are the memories that uh, we love the most because they are very vividly in our mind. So I think it is better to keep in touch with the friends that we make in childhood. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about rain. Do you like rainy days? Yes, I like rainy days. As you know that in Pakistan, it is very, uh, in summer especially, it is very warm. Uh, so whenever it gets rain, it has a very beautiful view and uh, I actually love it, enjoy it very much when it rains. Mm -hmm. And what do you do on rainy days? Well, on the rainy days, we especially do uh, some uh, traditional food, which is actually pakoda. So I uh, eat a lot of pakoda when it, uh, it gets rainy and enjoy it with a beautiful view of the rain. Mm -hmm. Does it rain much in your country? Sorry, repeat the question. Do, does it rain much in your country? Sorry, ma'am, I couldn't hear you properly. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I will repeat the question. Does it rain much in your country? No, it doesn't rain much in our country because uh, uh, there is a very... because a lot of deforestation started recently so there, aren't, uh, there is a very big climate change, so I don't think there is a lot of change, a uh, lot of much rain in our country right now, but it used to be a lot of rain before deforestation. Mm -hmm. Now let's move on to talk about teachers. Do you like any of your teachers? Yes, uh, I like, uh, uh, there was a teacher uh, in my uh, primary school, his name was Ali. And he was a very good teacher and he was a very an honest person. He always uh, uh, taught us about how to live our life and uh, how to overcome every hardship that we face in our life with their dignity and strength. So I like him uh, very much. Uh, and do you want to be a teacher? No, I do not want to be a teacher. Recently, I just completed my graduation with software engineering, so I want to be a competent software engineer one day. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's it for part one now. Now we can move on to part two. So in part two, I will give you a card with a topic, and then you will have to talk about the topic for two minutes. You have one minute to think about what you're going to say, and you may take some notes to help if you wish. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Great, then I will share my screen with you. All right, can you see that? Yes, ma'am. All right, great, so you should describe a time when you helped a friend. Your one minute of preparation starts now.
OK, so your one minute is over. You may start speaking now. Well, I would like to talk about the uh, time when I held my friend. Uh, it was actually my best friend. His name was Ahmed and uh, he was uh, uh, stuck in his mind that what should he choose for his graduation and uh, he was really couldn't figure uh, couldn't figure it out that what should he choose uh, his parents were asking him to go for a medical field but he was interested in uh, engineering so he asked me to uh, help him uh, to to uh, to give him some opinion so i uh, gave him my opinion that you should choose uh, subject that you are really interested in. So I advised him uh, that he should go uh, pursue for uh, engineering and he really took my advice and he, he uh, chose engineering and uh, he was really doing well in the uh, even in the first matter he got 3.5 CGPA and he was really appreciated by his teacher when he made his uh, semester project and he was really doing well uh, and now he has completed almost like six semesters and he's doing very well now and uh, it is uh, now he's a uh, uh, fyp and uh, he asked me to uh, again for help for his fyp and uh, helped him with his fyp report and he was really happy about that and uh, i was really uh, uh, happy that i could help him in such a way that uh, he is very happy about that and uh, I really felt very good that whenever I was in some, uh, whenever I felt down, he was always there for me to help me in difficult situation. So I wanted to be there for him uh, in his dis difficult situation so that he could know that someone is there to help him, to advise him, to consult him about his future. Okay, thank so, you. That's your two minutes. All right, thank you. Um, okay, so that's it for part two. Now we can move on to part three. Um, so in part two, you described a time when you helped a friend. Now in this part, I want to ask you some questions that are related to this topic. Do you love being a social worker? Well, I love being a social worker because in this way you can help a lot of people. Uh, because, uh, as you can see, there are a lot of people that need help, especially I live in a countryside and the major social issue there was garbage so I really wanted to become a social worker so that I can help my countryside help cleaning. Mm -hmm. So what do social workers do? Social workers do help people about any problem like uh, in our uh, countryside there is a community for a uh, clean environment as uh, there were a lot of garbage uh, there on the roads so there was a uh, committee who has uh, established a uh, community a special uh, social workers just to clean the countryside so uh, they uh, clean the whole city so i think that they do help a lot of people mm -hmm. and what are social work values Social work, uh, I think social work value should be that we should be loyal and honest towards people because whenever people uh, seek for help from social workers, they should be honest and uh, do their job with dignity and strength. They should not uh, fooling around the people and their uh, values. Mm -hmm. And what type of person would make a good social worker? Sorry, repeat the question. What type of person would make a good social worker? Well, the person who is uh, who has uh, suffered such uh, circumstances, like some uh, social issues, can become a uh, good social worker because he had uh, went through all the uh, troubles, so he knows better uh, things about that social uh, issues, and he can work a lot better to uh, overcome that social issues. Mm -hmm. Do you think you would be qualified to be a social worker? Well, I think I would be qualified for a social worker. As I mentioned earlier that there is a committee in our countryside that helps a lot of people in our countries and I am a part of that community. 
and uh, it is very good and uh, good time to it is very good to help people and i really felt very good and uh, enjoyed that time when i help people to solve their problems so i really think that i would uh... good and uh, do you think sh- social work is valued enough in your country well i don't think that it is valued enough in our country because if in the countryside there is a lot of garbage garbage is everywhere you can see on the roads but uh, as you go to the main city there uh, isn't as much garbage as on the countryside so the there are a lot of uh, countrysides in our country so i don't think that they and they are facing the same problems like uh, our countryside so i don't think that it is valued as much as it should be mm mm-hmm. So should governments create mo- more social work job opportunities? Yes, uh, I think the government should uh, create more job opportunities for social workers to uh, do some social uh, uh, works uh, for the people that are in need. So I think that the government should uh, fund some communities to help the social workers in order to overcome this situation. and can you think of any specific field where those people could work like a well, specific example sorry can you think of a specific example of a field or an area where those people could work well there is a field uh, well i could only think of the field uh, of the where people can work is uh, in the city area uh, there is a lot uh, big building uh, where people lot of social workers work there to solve the people's problems and it is a very i visited that building uh, uh, one time only and it was very good environment there people were very friendly and they were doing a lot of great job there and uh, they were the people that were helping the city to clean and, and i think that uh, this was very good uh, time for me all right thank you so much that's the end of your test now so you can sit back and relax a little bit take a deep breath um i will need one or two minutes to add up your overall score i will mute myself for that but i'll be right back with you and then we can talk about your feedback all right in this course You will have a series of educational videos in which you will learn each and every tip you will need in specific details for both general and academic modules. Next question type is double question or Attached to each video, you will have the PDF files for each question type including the paragraph structure, the expressions and the techniques you can apply which have all been taught in the videos. To make sure that you learn everything properly in each video we will write an essay a letter or a report by using the tips that you have learned moreover something to help you in this section is the different question samples we have put for you to write your own writing about this isn't everything we strongly recommend you to use our writing correction services as well so that our examiner can give you a written and video feedback and make sure you're ready for the real test. Join us to become our next successful candidate. All right. So uh, now let's get to the feedback part. Let's see how you did. So before I talk about the criteria for IELTS, I just want to give you a general idea of what each of the parts is about. Um so as you might know, part 1 is about uh personal questions and you're supposed to give rather short answers right three sentences more or less depending on how long they are so i think the length of your your answers in part 1 was good you don't need to go into much detail just talk a little bit about yourself uh, and then you're good and then part 2 is all about talking at length developing your ideas developing your topic right so you you need to cover all the bullet points that you're given and it's very important to cover the full 2 minutes You didn't seem to have trouble to cover the full two minutes. Just to be sure to stick to that. 
Um, and then part three is a lot about your coherent answers, right? It's supposed to be more of a discussion kind of part, um, longer answers connecting your ideas, right? So in this part, be sure to um, not keep your answers too short. Develop your topic a little bit. If it's getting too long, the examiner will interrupt you, all right? So um, now let's see how you did in each of the criteria. So you have, first of all, your fluency and coherence, which we're going to talk about your lexical resource, which is your vocabulary, grammar and accuracy, and lastly, your pronunciation, okay? And we're gonna go through each one of them and then see how you did there. Um, okay, so let's get started with your fluency and coherence. So I think generally you do have a good command of your English. You are definitely able to talk at lengths. You didn't have any troubles talking for two full minutes. I think you could have gone on for two more probably. <laughs> Um, so you did great there, right? Um, in some of your answers in part three, I think some of them were a little bit on the short side. So maybe just add one or two sentences. See, So if, for example, if you're running out of ideas what to say, you can always give an example or give more details uh, about what you're talking about. You can even go off topic, right? As long as you have some reference to the question, you can always go off topic and talk about something else. This is especially useful if you have questions um, or you don't have a lot of information about that you're not familiar with, right? So um, especially if, I don't know, if you don't have a lot of vocabulary for that, try to switch the topic to something that you know a lot about and that can boost your overall performance. Right. Um, and just a little a little um, hint, if you don't know what to say, you can always lie. You don't have to tell the truth. Nobody cares about that. Just lie about something. And then as long as you keep talking, that's the most important part that you can show off that you know how to how to talk. Right. Um, so you did have some repetition here and there when talking. I don't think it was a lot of um, it was causing a lot of hesitation. You just repeated a few words here and there and again and you know some ideas um, so when you notice that you're repeating some stuff try to um, as I said before switch to something else give another detail another example try to uh, go into another direction right um, yeah as I said before you had a little bit of hesitation sometimes uh, content wise but it, it was not a lot right so you're definitely able to um, to keep your flow up um, when it comes to your connectives and your discourse markers, I think you had a few nice ones in there, right? So I'd like to talk about something. You started one answer with that. Um, and then as you can see, so th that, that, as I mentioned, so those are some great um, discourse markers that you used. I think when it comes to linking words, you know, those are those little ones like, and, but, because, um, you could bring a little more variation in there because you overused some of them. So, for example, in your part two, um, you were telling a story and a lot of the times you just connected with your uh, your sentences with the little word and. So, you know, you, you're telling a story and you're saying and, 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 and. Try to switch that up. That helps a lot. So, for example, instead of saying and, you can say in addition, besides, um, additionally, moreover, furthermore, right? There are tons of lists out there with those linking words that can really help you boost your fluency a little bit more, right? So try to not overuse, to not overuse some of them. Um, that's very important, right? That's uh, why I would give you a seven for today for your fluency. Now let's move on to your lexical resource, your vocabulary. Um, so overall, as I said before, you definitely keep up your flow and you have very nice vocabulary that you use. So you definitely show that you're aware of the style that's supposed to, uh, that you're supposed to use in the answers. So you definitely had the right vocabulary to answer my questions. Um, you had some very nice collocations in there as well. Just to name a few, you were saying facing hard times. Um, some chit chat, overcome hardships, uh, to seek help. They went through some troubles. Uh, that's very good. So, uh, you know, as long as you know how to use those rather more con 
complex structures, go for it, right? That's that that was a very good way to go. Um, the only thing I would say uh, in your vocabulary is try to paraphrase a little more. Do do you know what paraphrasing is? Yes, changing sentence into some different way. Exactly. So find synonyms. Because um, oftentimes you just, when I asked the question, you repeated the exact same words. I'm pretty sure that you know others, so try to use those, right? Try to not repeat the exact, exactly the question, but find some other words to describe it and to refer to the question that might help you a lot, right? So just switch it up a little bit here and there. Um, however, having said that, I think you have a great vocabulary that you're using. Moving on to grammar now. Um, so I think you have a nice mix of your structures there, right? You do have some, for example, some uh, relative clauses in there, some compound sentences. Um, you did show um, some different tenses that you used. Um, so that's very good. Try to bring in maybe a little bit more of different kinds of structures. Um, again, in this case, it would help you if you uh, used more linking words because that's also going to affect your uh, sentence structures. Okay. And um, so you did have some uh, mistakes that still persisted here and there. Um, so, for example, uh, you sometimes had a little trouble of where, what word, uh, like what words belong where in the sentence. So, your overall sentence structure. So, for example, uh, you said he didn't know what should he do, what he should do, right? So that's you know in the wrong order there. Um, yeah. So, uh, and then in um, part two, I noticed that. Most of the time, you stuck to your correct tense, so you stuck to the past tense, which was great because we're telling about something that happened in the past, right? But then you slip like once or twice and threw in some present tense there. So, for example, you said he is happy about it. Well, he was happy about it, right? Because it happened in the past. So, especially in part two, pay very close attention to what tense the question asks for and be sure to stick to that, right? Don't don't mix your tenses there. Um, I mean, it was just once or twice, but you know, those are those little things that, you know, just happen here and there. Um, yeah, and then again, you did have here and there some troubles with the plural S. So for example, you said it brings a lot of great job. Well, when you say a lot, there is more than one, right? So you need to say a lot of great jobs. Don't don't swallow those s's. Goes the same um, same for your third person s. So instead of he like, he likes, right? Those are those little things that sometimes get lost in the process. And when you notice those, maybe also you can try to slow down a little bit to practice. Pay close attention to what you're saying, to that you're not missing those little things, and then you can, you know, go back to your um, nice pace. Don't rush into it. If you feel like you're missing too much, slow down a little bit. Okay. So overall, I would give you seven for your grammar today, and then moving on to your pronunciation. Um, so I think generally you're definitely able uh, to, you know, keep up the flow. And um, you're, it's easy for me to understand you. Um, you do have some ups and downs in your voice, but I think you could do more in, in your intonation, right? Um, be sure to not slide into that monotone voice. I think that sometimes happen when people are nervous. That's totally normal. But try to keep your, your little ups and downs in there, right, in your voice. Um, to practice that, you can always try to record yourself and uh, you know try to figure out where you could switch it up. And then to practice, you can always do this mirroring method, right? So you listen to some native speaker in English. So for example, you can listen to our podcasts or something. Or I don't know, for example, if you watch Netflix or any other streaming platform, there you can just listen to it and then try to imitate 
the intonation of what they're saying. And over time, you can adapt that, right? So you don't even have a test date set yet. That's, that, that means that you can still practice, right? Um, so try to do that uh, if it's possible on a regular basis. So you have enough practice to adapt that, okay? And then rhythm-wise, I think you can still try to connect your sounds a little better. So sometimes it sounds like you're pronouncing uh, the words like not connecting them, but each one on their own, right? So this is about your rhythm overall to, to have a melody kind of almost in your speaking, okay? Um, right, and be clear to pronounce, uh, be sure to pronounce your words clearly. Sometimes I feel like you're mumbling a little bit. It might be the connection, but be, be sure to pronounce it very clearly so uh, the examiner knows that you know how to pronounce the words. Okay, um, all right, so having said that, I would give you a seven for your pronunciation today. That puts you at an overall seven for today's test. So it's, I would say it's a rather strong seven um, as long as you practice more, uh, you know, just um, stick to those, those techniques and those tips that I just gave you. And um, I, I'm sure with those, you can uh, always try to boost your score. And um, yeah, as I said before, try to practice on a regular basis. That's, that's definitely going to help you a lot. Speaking course. This course is made up of five offline speaking videos in which you will learn all the necessary tips and techniques to take the IELTS speaking test with a high score. Tell me about your family. Do you like In addition to that, you will have access to useful grammar and vocabulary resources. Once you finish your course, you will have one online mock test of speaking along with comprehensive feedback under the same exam conditions. Interesting question. Very... Join us to become our next successful candidate.